Clintoneers a decision about tobacco and teenagers. It could bring new government regulations and far-ranging political and economic consequences. We'll have a live report. We're waiting for the president to make his announcements of proposals to help stem the tide of teen smoking. CNN's Wolf Blitzer is at the White House and joins us with more. Wolf? Well, just to set the scene, Joe, the president is now in the Oval Office with some teenagers who have promised that they will not smoke. He's also joined by others who have been, been very active in this uh, long-standing campaign to try to reduce teenage smoking. The president outline why he has decided to accept the Food and Drug Administration's recommendation that tobacco be regulated. He will make the case in more detail at his news conference this afternoon, but at this event this morning he wants to express his opinions. The president is now walking into the Oval Office. We anticipate that his remarks will be relatively brief. He's now meeting some of these kids who have promised that they will never start smoking, so let's listen to the president. Well, good morning. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, today I have brought together medical experts and children who've taken a pledge against smoking to talk about our common commitment to ending youth smoking. This issue is critical to our efforts to improve the health of our nation. According to, for the, to the Center for of the two million Americans who will die in 1995, over 400,000 of them will have conditions related to smoking. Later today, I will announce my strategy for combating this problem. Based on one simple idea, we should do everything we possibly can to keep tobacco out of the hands of our young people in the United States. Uh, now, I'd like to uh, call on Shayna Bailey, who's a 12-year-old from Florida, who's part of a successful program that teaches students how and why they should stay smoke-free. Shana? On behalf of the Smoke-Free Class of 2000, I would like to present you with these t-shirts, and we would all like you to know that we support and applaud your actions to discourage young people from smoking. Thank you. Thank you very much. Morgan? Where's Morgan? Um, you to tell I'd, li I'd like to tell you a story about my brother and I. We've been buying cigarettes from vending machines for the last five years. We, we hate the idea of smoking. And then we go and testify for bans against cigarette vending machines. And the tobacco lobbyist has stopped us every year. So this is our chance to finally get something through, because you, you have the big choice. <laughs> everybody in this room agrees with me that you're being a great leader in doing this. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. <You're> <laughs> you may become a, a cult figure here. <laughs> anybody else want to say anything? Any other young people? Thank you. As you know, uh, there's members of the press are here. I'm going to have a press conference in a couple of hours, and I'll answer all your questions about this and anything else. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Bristol, how are you? Good to be happy. Well, obviously, a, a very orchestrated White House event to try to underscore the president's new initiative to curb teenage smoking. The president inviting a bunch of young kids into the Oval Office with representatives from various medical organizations involved in the anti-smoking campaign to at least begin the process today of what he says will be a new initiative to curb teenage smoking. The president saying that the FDA's goal uh, the president will announce later today the FDA's goal will be to reduce teenage smoking by half over the next seven years. Just to make a few points that the president will be making later today, he will announce that his proposed rule, which is not yet the law of the land, but will be reviewed by the public and eventually by the Food and Drug Administration, will bar all vending machine sales of cigarettes as well as all mail order sales of cigarettes.
tobacco. It will require proof of age. Under 18 will not be allowed to buy cigarettes. The sponsorship of sporting events by cigarette brand names will be restricted. He will propose a $150 million educational fund funded by the tobacco industry to try to educate children about the dangers of smoking. He will limit advertising in teenage publications glorifying supposedly cigarette smoking. He will show that these advertising, advertisements from now on will only be allowed black and white advertising, no color photographs, and finally, no free samples of cigarettes if his proposed rule becomes the law of the land. The president, again, regulating cigarettes and smokeless tobacco, not cigars. Donna? Now, from the station named Outstanding News Operation by the Associated Press, this is News 4 at Noon. News 4 at Noon, I'm Joe Krebs. And good afternoon, I'm Barbara Harris. And at this hour in the news, President Clinton is poised to announce tough new proposals aimed at keeping cigarettes out of the hands of teenagers. Saying tobacco is an addictive drug, the President is instructing the Food and Drug Administration to impose unprecedented restrictions on cigarette advertising and sales. Among them, forbidding brand name ads at sporting events. Right now, the ads are at everything from tennis matches to stock car races. The proposals also call for a $100 million education the tobacco industry to stop kids from smoking and would also limit tobacco ads in teen magazines to black and white text with no pictures. And now for the latest on the president's announcement, let's go live to Jim Hanley, who is live on the North Lawn of the White House. Jim? Good afternoon, Good afternoon Joe. Joe and Barbara. It was all about teenagers here at the White House today, as you mentioned, and the president surrounded himself with children committed to being part of a smoke-free generation. They even brought along one of their young president this morning. They are members of the smoke-free class of 2000. The chorus from the health community today was clearly behind the president's bold move in keeping cigarettes away well, from kids. Like Representatives from the AMA, the Cancer, Lung, and Heart Associations were all on hand. Also represented the sports world. Here's what some of them had to say. The physicians of America believe that the lives of our children are worth more than the profits in a pack of the information that we've received from the administration today is very heartening. We think that today is a historic day. 8.9% of third to sixth graders are reported as being users of spit tobacco. Baseball has been a big culprit. One of the things we're working on is to try to eliminate seeing the players use spit tobacco. You can't legislate it. I'm not against tobacco companies. I'm against cancer. Joining us now live at the White House is Morgan Lesko of Rockville, Maryland. Morgan, we just saw a picture of you talking to the president. What did you tell him this morning? Well, I basically told him that what he's doing is really great because he's being a leader. And he wasn't asked to do this by anyone. He just said, this needs to be done, so I'm going to do it. What do you think needs to be done? You, you've got a photo right there. Tell us a little bit about this photo. Well, this is a photograph of my brother and I, Max. And we d we've d been doing stings for the past five years. Cigarettes from vending machines. And then we testify for bans against vending machines in, at the state legislator, le legislature mm -hmm. or the county council or wherever. And this is pretty easy to do. Oh, very easy. We've been stopped once by a customer. And... <sighs> What else needs to be done, do you think? They were talking about billboards in there. Do you see a lot of your friends smoking or, or kids your age smoking? Well, I have seen some kids, like, on the bus with cigarettes in their hands and stuff. Billboards influence kids a lot because they say, oh, that guy on the billboard who's smoking is cool, so I want to be cool, so I'll smoke. You have never tried a cigarette yourself, you were telling never me. Never want to. Thanks a lot, Morgan Lesko. The right idea there. 13 years old from Rockville. Got to speak with President Clinton today. The president will be holding a news conference at 1.30 this afternoon, and we'll bring you live details coming up at 4 o'clock on. Joe and Barbara, back to you from the White House. All right, Jim, thank you. Thank you, Jim. The state of Maryland did its own study. And the results are disturbing. A 1994 survey shows that one in three children is a regular smoker by the age of 17. At least 50 children start smoking every day. And in 1992, a study showed that 26% of Maryland's eighth graders were regular smokers compared to 14% nationally.